Is the 3 liter Duramax diesel a good engine? Well, today I'm going to give you my opinion as a heavy duty mechanic whether or not I think it's a good engine or not. What is going on today guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back at my shop and as I mentioned earlier, I figured today I would dive into the highly requested 3 liter Duramax diesel engine and tell you what I think. Now right off the bat, I actually haven't driven one yet and uh, that's what I'm going to do next week. So look forward to that video when I actually get in the truck and uh, see how I like it in terms of drivability. But today I figured we focus more on the mechanical aspects of the engine things I like about it, some issues I've heard about it, um, as well as just my general opinion on whether or not I think you guys should go out and buy this diesel engine. Now, before I get going here, I'm curious what your thoughts are, if you guys own one of these three liter Duramaxes or are planning on buying one. Always like to hear your thoughts down in the comments down below. So specifically, we're talking about the LM2 Duramax, the three liter inline six engine that is available in the GMC as well as the Chevrolet 1500 pickup truck. Now this engine is gonna come with 277 horsepower as well as 460 uh, pounds feet of torque, which is quite the punch for a three liter engine, I will say that. Now in terms of fuel economy, GM says it'll get a max of 33 miles per gallon. However, if you look online, most guys are generally running around 27 miles per gallon which is still fantastic for a pickup truck. In terms of towing ability, um, if you have a two-wheel drive truck, you'll be able to tow 9,500 pounds. However, most guys have four-wheel drives, um, so that will limit you to 9,100 pounds, which is honestly still a lot of weight, guys, for a 1,500. Now, what worried me a little bit was the fact that GM's main focus for this three-liter Duramax was fuel economy. And if you guys will remember, two weeks ago, I made a video how Ram has discontinued their three-liter Eco Diesel. Um, their goal was also to focus on fuel economy and well, that engine was just littered with issues. So I was a little bit worried when I read that. However, GM also said that they planned on making this the most reliable diesel engine they have ever made. So hopefully GM does the right thing here. Starting from the bottom with this small Duramax engine, GM with a cast aluminum block. It's a deep skirt block with nodular iron main caps. Um, which is gonna help give it strength because, well, it's aluminum. Good thing is, though, they still went with um, iron liners, iron cylinder liners, so it is going to be strong enough to take that high diesel compression. Now, speaking of strength, GM also went with a fully forged crankshaft and fully forged connecting rods. In fact, the connecting rod in internal combustion engine takes the most abuse out of any component, so it's a good thing that GM's got some good forged components in there. In terms of pistons, they went with some aluminum pistons, but not just any aluminum pistons, they went with hyper -tutectic. Now, someone's gonna tell me that's not how it's pronounced, but basically, they're aluminum alloy pistons with high silicon content, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna really minimize the aluminum's thermal um, expansion rate. So you have an iron cylinder wall. Iron doesn't expand as much as aluminum does when it gets hot. So what you would traditionally need to do is make sure that you had a lot of clearance between the aluminum piston and the iron liner. But with this special aluminum piston, you still can have very lightweight, strong piston and still have very tight clearances because the aluminum piston won't expand as much. Very well done by GM really cool tech. Now moving up the engine, this little Duramax is gonna come with aluminum head, which I generally don't like. I think that a diesel should have an iron head with such high compression ratios. However, this is a 1500, so it is what it is. But what I do like about this head is it is going to be a dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. This is a tried and true system for diesel engines in line six, with dual overhead cams. Every single engine in the shop that you see here, guys, has that exact same setup. So I like the fact that GM has really kind of taken what's tried and true out in the, let's say, big trucking world and kind of shrunk it down into this really cool, small Duramax engine. This engine will come with a single turbo and it'll be a VGT turbo or variable geometry turbo, which will enable you to kind of have a small acting turbo as well as a larger acting turbo, depending on how much uh, power you need from the engine, which is kind of cool. GM also says that this turbo is going to be fitted with heavy duty bearings that are low friction, which is going to greatly increase the life of the turbo. Now, I think what separates this little Duramax from the Eco Diesel as well as the smaller Power Stroke that was in the Ford F-150 
is the fact that it is an inline six engine. Now, I've talked about this a couple times on my channel and I just think that inline six diesel engines are highly advantageous. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. The first one is vibration and balance. So an inline six engine, the same style of engine that's in here, although a little bigger, <laughs> um, they are extremely well balanced and this limits vibration. Now there's enough vibration already with a diesel engine to ruin components. The last thing you want is additional vibration. So they're very, very well balanced and their vibration levels are very minimal. So that's good. Number two is the fact that they are torque monsters. So most inline six engines are what we call under square engines, meaning the stroke of the piston is longer than the actual bore of the cylinder. And this allows for easy torque generation because of the leverage of the crank throw with that long stroke. And this results in an inline six engine making torque very easily. So those are the two reasons why I really like inline six diesel engines. And this is why I think that GM has a good recipe on their hands with their small three liter Duramax. Now, a couple things I took notice when I was looking over the specs for this engine. Number one is that the gear train is at the rear of the engine. Now, normally, an American made diesel engine, the gear train is at the front just for ease of maintenance. So for example, like Cummins, the gear train is usually always at the front and the gear train tends to run, let's say things like your fuel pump, power steering, uh, air compressor on a big heavy duty truck. So things like that. Um, now with the gear train at the rear, it makes servicing those things much more difficult because typically the rear of the engine is underneath the cab. Now, I have a hunch why GM did this, probably to do something with Isuzu because GM and Isuzu um, in the past have come together to make the Duramax engine. And I feel like this three liter was probably also gonna be marketed in the Asian as well as European market. And in those markets, a lot of those trucks are cab over. So the cab completely flips up and it's actually really easy to work on the back of the engine. However, in North America, when we have a hood, um, it makes it a little bit difficult and I know firsthand because, well, I get to work on Detroit diesel engines or Mercedes engines. This is an old girl, but we have an M14 Cummins engine in here. And as you guys can see, um, the gear train is at the front here. So this is the air compressor right here. The air compressor runs out the front. Underneath it, we have the power steering pump. And sometimes you also have a fuel pump right here. So it's all nice and easy. It's serviceable. It's right at the front of the engine. When you pop the hood open, easy to service. Now, let me show you a Detroit. Now here we have a DD13 or Detroit Diesel 13, also a Mercedes product. And as you guys can see, hopefully, so right up front here, this is the fuel pump, obviously right off the back of the engine because the gear train's back here under the cab, which kind of sucks. And then below it, back here, which you guys probably can't see is where the air compressor is. So a lot of the stuff runs off the gear train at the back of the engine. And oftentimes it makes it quite difficult to replace components. So that's what I'm getting at. A good example of why this is annoying is the varial displacement oil pump belt on these three liter Duramax diesels. I don't really like the fact that it's a variable displacement oil pump. Usually you just want your oil pressure high at all times, but with this pump, it's gonna give you high oil pressure when the engine needs it and low oil pressure when the engine doesn't need high oil pressure, I guess. But this belt does have a lifespan of 150,000 miles. So it is going to need to be replaced most likely within the life of the truck. It also needs to be inspected. Now it is at the very back of the engine and in order to actually inspect this critical oil pump belt, the transmission has to be removed in order to even gain access to it. So that is one thing to look out for because that's gonna probably cost about $1,000 just to have your oil pump belt inspected. And guys, you do wanna have it inspected. If that, if that belt were to fail, well, your oil pump would fail. There'd be no oil pressure engine and that could be catastrophic for the engine. So that is one thing to keep in mind if you guys plan on buying one of these engines. But overall, I do like what GM has done with this smaller Duramax diesel. I think there is real potential of having a reliable, strong, long running diesel engine. But as I said many, many times in this, on this channel, no engine is perfect and this three liter Duramax is no exception. There are some issues which we'll talk about. The number one problem with these three liter Duramax is by far, so far, is the long crank times or cranking the engine and it not even starting. Now, 
This is an ongoing issue. I really don't think GM even has a full solution to this yet. However, um, it does seem like it has something to do with the camshaft um, position wheel and somehow those are getting bent and uh, usually when you replace those, the, the problem is solved, but there are cases that I've read where that in fact actually didn't even solve the problem. And uh, like I said, GM really doesn't have a full 100% fix for this yet. So that is a little bit unfortunate if you guys get stuck with this. Now, this engine is only three years old, so most of these fixes are gonna be covered under warranty, but it is still just you know, time and effort bringing the truck to the dealer. The other thing is that if the dealership is going to be replacing the camshaft position wheel, it takes a lot of time and effort to do so. GM has been quoting anywhere from 40 to 50 hours to replace this part. Reason being, once again, is because the gear train is at the rear and the camshafts actually run off the gear train. They're all timed and they run off the rear. So what GM has to do, they actually have to take the cab completely off the frame to gain access to that part of the engine. They have to dig in the engine and then go from there. So it is a very time consuming process. That is definitely the number one issue with these engines at this point. And unfortunately, GM just doesn't really have a 100% solid solution to make sure that this problem does not come back. Now, the second most common complaint or concern about this engine was the oil pump belt. Now, obviously this is not an actual issue. It's more of just a design flaw. And there really has been no, um, complaints about these belts failing prematurely, nothing like that, but it is very annoying to know that you will have to pay upwards of a thousand dollars just to get this belt inspected and probably the same amount to actually get it replaced. So that is kind of a concern when talking to consumers who have bought the truck, but I wouldn't really call it an issue, but definitely something to be aware of. Number three issue that I've seen with these Duramaxes is the rear main seal leaking. So the rear main seal is the seal on the back of the crankshaft, uh, basically between the back of the engine and the transmission. So the transmission has to be taken off and you have to replace that seal. Again, not a fun job. It's not like it's that critical. It's just an oil leak. Obviously some are leaking really bad and they have to be replaced. I've also heard that this is actually pretty rare, um, but it is something, again, to be aware of. If you do see oil dripping from the back of your engine, it could be that your rear main seal is leaking, and that is a pretty big job to do because the transmission has to come off. Number four is injectors. Now, whoa, be careful. I know the Duramaxes, the early Duramaxes had big injector problems. We're not talking anything like that. What can happen is that the nozzle tips, because it is a direct injection engine, as most diesels are, um, that tip is actually in the combustion chamber. And with these modern diesel engines, a lot of EGR gas is coming back into the engine. It makes them very carboned up, it makes them very sooty engines. And those nozzle tips can get kind of carboned up, I guess and that can cause some rough idling. Worst case scenario, it's even gonna cause a misfire. Um, so if you do have that kind of issue, it is good to be aware of that. Potentially, your injector nozzles could be a little carboned up and they may need to be cleaned out or replaced. Now, I just wanna show you guys how much carbon actually gets put back into these engines from the EGR. So this is your EGR hot pipe, and this comes back into your intake. So let me pop this off for you. Hopefully you guys will be able to see. Look at that, that's all carbon. That's just all carbon soot that gets put all back into your engine. So that is why those injectors are most likely carboning up is because all that EGR gas, like look, that pipe is silver underneath there. So that is all going back into your engine every time you run it. So that is why your injectors are most likely getting carboned up. Now, most people tend to think of soot as very soft stuff, but the type of soot that comes through that pipe is just basically carbon. And that stuff is honestly like sand, very fine sand. So think of that going through your engine, your piston rings, it just kind of gets into everything. And honestly, guys, an EGR does limit the life of an engine. So if you guys are in a place, a state, a province, where it is not that restrictive and you can most likely delete an EGR system, potentially an after treatment system, I would highly recommend it. It's gonna greatly, greatly increase the life of any diesel engine. Now, the fifth thing that, you know, kind of caught my eye as a concern for this engine is uh, the fuel pump. So the fuel pump GM says has a life of 100,000 miles, which 
in my humble opinion, is really not that long for a fuel pump. I don't know why it's so short. So you will definitely most likely be replacing that once, maybe even twice throughout the life of the engine. And guys, once again, that is run off the rear gear train. And in order to get there, apparently it's not that fun. The oil pan's got to come off. A bunch of other stuff has to get out of the way before you can get up there. Not as bad as pulling the transmission. Um, and you know, once again, it's not an active issue, let's say, but it is something to be concerned um, and something that needs to be dealt with, I guess, eventually on the engine that most, let's say, American-made diesels aren't gonna have to struggle with like you would with this inline six with the gear train at the rear. Now, what I find really impressive and what's the silver lining of those issues I just mentioned is that there is no emission-related issues with this engine so far. Now that is extremely rare with a modern diesel engine. I'm sure most of you guys know modern diesels are just strapped to the gills with emission stuff and that can cause a ton of problems. Lots of engine derates. The Ram Eco Diesel, which I've covered quite a bit, uh, really, really struggled when it came to emission related faults. Um, it was a huge issue for those engines and I think that's ultimately what put it in the grave was its emission problems. Now, this engine's been out for just about three years and there hasn't really been any major emissions um, component failures or emission related faults, which I think is wonderfully impressive by GM. Whatever GM's doing, they need to keep doing because um, you, know, you just really don't see that right now with modern diesel engines. In my notes, I did forget to mention that there is some complaints of sticking EGR valves as well as some cracked EGR coolers, although apparently this is still very rare, but I thought I would mention to you guys after going on that whole spiel of no emission related problems. So again, no engine is perfect, but for the most part, the small Duramax is doing very well when it comes to emissions. So in conclusion, guys, I'm actually quite hopeful about this engine. Again, only been over three years, time will tell, but as of right now, I think GM has made a very good product. I like the fact that they have basically taken a big rig, something that's in you know this shop here, a 15, 13 liter engine, and they've shrunk it down into a three liter engine. Inline six, single turbo, dual overhead cam. That is the bare bones of every engine in the shop here. And I like the fact that GM has kind of copied that and put that into a smaller platform, smaller compact truck. And uh, I think it'll do quite well just in terms of design features. The other thing I like to hear is that there is no real emission related issues as of right now. I think that is a huge plus. I think that really gives GM um, a leg up on the competition. We all know about the Eco Diesel, it kind of sucked. And then the Power Stroke got discontinued because of bad sales numbers, but I think there's probably more of that whole story. But I do think GM has made something that is worth you guys taking the time to go and test drive, see if you like it, because I think it is going to be a reliable diesel engine that you guys will hopefully enjoy. Well guys, that's my two cents on the old Duramax as a diesel mechanic. I'm really excited for next week when I actually get to take the truck out for a spin and uh, really get to see how it handles, how the engine feels and all that fun stuff. Hopefully you guys are excited for that video to come next week. As always, if you guys have anything to say, if you think I said something wrong, if you think I'm just wrong in general, please let me know. I'm curious to what you guys think. But as always, if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We got lots of cool stuff planned. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.